In this video, I'm putting it all on the line by tackling some of the internet's most popular design challenges. I'll be drawing logos from memory, changing the styles of mascots, and seeing if five minutes really is long enough to create a billion dollar brand. All right guys, so I've got six design challenges for today. I've got my trusty drawing tablet. So let's get started and see how it goes. First up, I'm gonna be drawing a logo from memory. And that logo is Firefox. Now I can't say I really use Firefox that often or ever. I mainly use Arc, and to be honest, I'm not that familiar with the new Firefox logo. I've seen the old one quite a bit though. And I know they're not that different. So I'm just gonna try to start sketching something out here. I definitely know we've got a big planet or at least a circle that's supposed to represent a planet, if you can call that a circle. And then the fox kind of wraps around that with his little head up here, some kind of body going around the planet and the tail finishes up somewhere around there. Let's zoom in here and get some of the details. So the tail is definitely supposed to be a flame, hence the name Firefox. Can't remember exactly how far it goes down the body though, but I think something like that is pretty close. The main thing though is I can't remember exactly which way his head is pointed. I'm not sure if it's up kind of like this or if it's off to the side like that. I think it's up though. So we'll just go with something like that. Stick his other ear in. I'm trying to remember if he has little bitty feet or not. I'm not sure, but I think it makes sense if he's hugging the earth. He's got to hold on somehow, right? And then just fix his back a little bit. Okay, now that we've got that, I'll get that big blue planet in there. And of course our little friend here will be that orange color we are all familiar with. I'm using a smoother brush to get some nice crispy lines. Get his feet in here, which I'm honestly starting to think aren't actually supposed to be there. Oh, but dang it, I almost forgot. He is supposed to have little sideburns, I think, coming off the side of his face. Let's just get that colored in and see where we're at. I mean, that's just beautiful. I know he's not supposed to be that rounded though, so I'll sharpen these up to make it look more like fur and less like jello. And apparently I drew him like he had a stub for a nose, so let's just fix that. And I'm pretty sure his body is supposed to be a little more circular to match the planet and then kind of taper off here at the tail. I do know the planet definitely has some type of like blue gradient on it. I don't think it goes all the way around to the top and mainly just sticks to the bottom. Kind of a lighter cyan right in the middle. Now the fox definitely has some shading around its more defining features like the whiskers, its ears, and the nose. This is probably super far off, but I'm just gonna try to make it look okay. That shadow should follow down along the body. Maybe even it's supposed to be a little bit bigger. And then it kind of fades out towards the bottom as well as along some of these inner points just to make the lighting look a little more realistic. The tail though is definitely supposed to be in layers, right? Where it kind of gets brighter the further it goes out to make it look like an actual flame. And these just kind of fade into each other, give it a nice smooth look. I don't know, something about that looks really wrong. Maybe I just need more of a contrast between the layers or something. Maybe this just come out a little further. Shadow in here. Now that that's looking a little better, I'm gonna give him some yellow color down towards the tail. So we get a nice pretty gradient. And I'm not sure if it's on the new one, but I know the old one. Has some really nice white fur around the nose. They kind of tapered off here at the seam. One last touch of shading around the whole thing. And I'm almost certain they don't have any detail on the planet anymore. So you know what guys, we're just gonna call this done and see how we did. Okay, the moment of truth. Well, apparently this is the real thing. Seems I got uh, basically everything wrong. Well, I guess there is a circle and some kind of fox, so that's not too bad. The big miss here was obviously the size of the planet, and I knew the head was supposed to be pointed to the side. Something just felt kind of off about it though, so I went with this. And of course, they just amputated his legs. I still think he looks better with them. Actually though, my version is not too terribly off from some of the older ones. Like my planet basically matches this one here, and the fox actually does have a leg in this version. And I guess my tail is somewhat similar to the very oldest version, but really all in all, it was a pretty poor effort. I'll give this a C plus, and let's move on. Up next, I'm gonna be taking away one of my most important drawing tools, my eyes. The task here is to draw the Pringles logo without being able to see. I am choosing the new minimal version over the old better version, mainly just because it's gonna be easier to draw. I'm gonna set myself up for success and go ahead and get some colors loaded in the palette. Now, unfortunately, I don't actually have a blindfold, so I'm just gonna close my eyes and you guys will just have to trust me, although it'll probably be apparent by how poor the drawing is. Without further ado, here we go. Eyes closed and we'll start with the big egg head, nice and white. I think coloring stuff in is gonna be the hardest part of this, but I'm gonna try to get it close. Obviously not gonna be able to get the whole thing, but hopefully I don't leave too many little blots anywhere. Okay, now the trick is I need some black, but I've only got white and red in the color palette, but I do know if I take my hand, lay it on my drawing tablet, where the corner of my hand is, is roughly where the color picker is. If I click that and then drag all the way down, that should be black, theoretically. I hope it is. Okay, let me try to get back on the face here. Okay, we're gonna go one eye there, one eye here. Mustache should be bigger on this side and then smaller on this side. Try to color that in the best I can, getting this side as well. Now two little brows above the eyes. And now I know the shortcut to switch to the red color, which I need for the bow tie. And that's gonna go right around here, I think. Color it in nice and pretty. <laughs> I tell you, coloring in is by far the hardest part of this and it's probably gonna make it look really bad, but what does a man to do who can't see? It will switch back to the other color, which is black. I'll use my hand trick again to find the color picker and push it all the way up. But see, the problem with that is when you move your hand from the area, you don't know where you left off. Uh, 
So I'm thinking I'm probably somewhere around here. Mm, I just need to write Pringles. Pringles does not start with an R. Pringles. Get the G. I know the letters like get smaller towards the middle of the bow and bigger as they go out. All right, let's see how we did. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. Oh, uh, no. Uh, well, I don't know what I was expecting, but I had hoped I'd do a little better than that. Looks like I didn't quite get the color picker trick to work that time. But, you know, I think overall it's got like a little charm to it. I mean, I could see this on a box of Pringles. All right, guys, I'm going to give this an A+, plus, and we're going to move on. And with two down, we are on to our next challenge, Style Swap, where I'm going to be taking a brand and changing its style. And for this, I have chosen the Captain Crunch mascot, Captain Crunch himself. And I'm going to be redrawing him in the style of one of my favorite shows, The Simpsons. And for my own sanity, I'm just going to be doing the head of the captain. But first, I need to show you guys something. Have have you seen the new Captain Crunch? I mean, look at him. I don't know, man. I just kind of feel like they killed our boy here. It's just so uncanny for some reason. I don't know if it's the dead eyes or what, but I definitely prefer the older one. So in that spirit, let's get back to our cartoon Captain Crunch. And I'll just drag Homer over here for a base. Because most of the Simpsons characters look pretty similar. So we can just use a lot of these same shapes to start building out the captain. Especially things like the eyes and the nose. Now, because the Simpsons is an animated cartoon, they tend to keep their objects pretty simple. So I'll make a slightly simpler version of the hat here that wraps around this big old noggin. But unlike Homer, the captain actually has a little bit of hair around the sides. But it is interesting because most Simpson characters don't actually have eyebrows, except for Milhouse, but he doesn't really count. Now, of course, Homer has his big round mouth with like a five o'clock shadow, but since Captain Crunch is clean shaven, I feel like he'd have more of a mouth like Bart. Something a little flatter that just kind of leads into that big Simpson smile since the captain appears to be pretty happy. The teeth on these characters are usually just little jagged things and a tongue to fill in the mouth. I think that whole thing could be a bit wider, actually. And of course, the pride of our captain here is his mustache. And when you look at characters in The Simpsons that actually have mustaches, it's basically Ned Flanders with your basic umbrella mustache. But I did find an episode where Homer and Bart try to become uh, businessmen. You've just won $10 million. And it looks like their mustaches resemble the captain's. So I'm going to say putting something like that in here is probably okay. So I will make it a little smaller just to make sure it doesn't cover up the mouth. The last thing we need to get in is the big collar, which just wraps right around the neck with the decorative stripes. And of course, those golden shoulder tassels, which will go on each side. And since my ability to draw a perfect circle is kind of poor, I'm going to cheat and use a shape. But of course, it's not really cheating if you don't get caught. And now it's really just a matter of outlining the character with a thin black outline to match the rest of the characters in the show. Just gotta make sure his eyeball doesn't pop through his nose. Thankfully, when it comes to The Simpsons, they don't really use different thicknesses for their lines. It's all just kind of the same weight, which makes the outlining process much easier. But honestly, this is by far my favorite part of illustrations. I love taking something that's in a sketch and looks kind of rough and making it look nice and clean with final line work. Because it's really just a good chance to refine it all and give certain things a bit more life if they need it. As well as fix any mistakes you might have had during that sketching process. If you want to be able to draw your own custom characters or learn basically anything else, you should check out the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an enormous online learning community for creatives with tons of classes in areas like illustration, animation, design, writing, and more. Personally, I've been enjoying this class about modeling characters in Blender by this guy Remington, an animator in California. I actually used to make video games back in the day, like this little endless runner ship game I launched when I was in high school called Drifter. But to be honest, I've always wanted to make 3D games, but 3D modeling isn't a strong suit of mine. So this modeling class was a really nice jumping off point just to get the basics of creating more complex characters, how to keep good topology, and it even included useful workflows to make the entire process quick and efficient. Skillshare also has these things they call learning paths, which basically just guide you through a series of related classes to help you learn something in an order that makes sense. So you won't be out here all confused about where to start. The first 500 people that click the link down below will get one month of Skillshare completely free. So you better hurry up before they're gone. And now that that's all done, all we have left to do is color. And I still find the best way to do that is to select all the things that you want the same color, expand that selection, and on a layer below the line work, you can fill it in with perfectly smooth edges. Of course, the hair, eyes, and teeth are all gonna be white. The skin will be yellow because this is a Simpsons character. The tongue will be red, and the tassels will of course be gold. On second thought, I might make his hair gray just for some more contrast. And we can't forget the C on the hat and the gold accent on the collar. And normally this would be it because the characters don't really have any shading detail in the actual show, but in the Simpsons movie and in a lot of their promo materials they tend to render out the characters a bit more so I'm gonna do that here too just by adding in some shadows here and there to make it look like the light is shining on his face. I'll definitely have some under these big bulging eyeballs and right under the nose and we'll shade basically every part of him so it all looks like a cohesive thing. It is kind of interesting when it comes to cartoons because some things that you think would definitely have shading like here under the teeth well it actually just ends up looking a little overly detailed so areas like that might just not get any shading at all but the mustache is definitely not one of those areas because 
because we want it to feel big and bushy. Basically all the hair on this side of his face will be covered in shadow and from there just a little bit to make the hat look 3D without overdoing it. Clothes though are generally one of the most important places to show shadow just because you really need that extra visual detail to tell what's going on like where the folds in the fabric are and what pieces overlap each other. Finally I'll get the golden tassels down here and make them feel like they actually have some volume and sometimes the characters would even get a little rim light on certain parts just along the edge of the face and all his clothes will need something like that too to match and usually with this level of detail we're going to get some bounce lighting too and that'll just come from the opposite side of the main light source flowing all the way down the neck around the clothes finishing off along the tassels and I think that basically wraps that one up so if you've ever wondered what Captain Crunch would look like if he was in the Simpsons or I guess if Homer decided to become a sea captain and sell a bunch of sugary cereal then he might look a little something like this who knows maybe we'll find this guy in the show someday and now with three challenges down we're moving on to our next one and one of my favorite things to do making logos realistic and the logo for this challenge is going to be Taco Bell somewhere I've been eating from quite a bit lately so the obvious first step into making this realistic is to try to find some type of bell this one would almost work but it's got too much of a focus blur here in the middle something like this though I think would work perfectly because it's really got the perfect shape just need to get rid of the handle of course and it's even got this little ball down here in the right spot already then I'll just come in here and separate the bell into a few different parts and that'll just give me some more control over the parts individually so I can get this thing to even better match the shape of the actual logo. I could even add more controls if I need to to really refine what's going on. Of course it can be hard to warp things perfectly so a little masking will help me finish up the rest of the way and I can touch up some of these edges where the warping distorted things a bit too much and I'll paint out some of these cracks to really make it feel like those are cut out of the middle. Now I've just got to figure out how to get this bottom part lined up. Maybe able to warp that into something that looks halfway decent. Oh, I'm not entirely sure. Okay, I can tell I need to separate the ball first. Now let's try that again, and that is much better. I can hide that, and then use a duplicate layer to fill in that hole. Just need to fix up the shape of everything so it matches the original. This ugly spot does look like it'd be a little tough to fix, but I think we can just reuse some of this texture, kind of fade it out so it matches the rest. A little healing brush here or there, and then some lighting adjustments to help that blend in. But now let's get that ball in place and stretch it up to size. But maybe an easier way to go about this is to just make the shape of the ball that we want, and then use that as a mask to stretch this texture over. Then when you arrange the layers correctly, it looks pretty good. The last step is just to reshape this piece up here, which I think I'll use a similar method for, and just warp those shines into more of a ball to match that shape better. Before I get into painting shadows and lighting and all that, we need something for this shape in the background that the bell rests on, and I'm thinking about just making that out of wood, because it kind of seems like it would match the bell color pretty well, plus wood is pretty common in bell towers. If I erase away some of the edges, it should look a little more like real wood instead of like a perfect shape, which is what I think I want. Heck, maybe we can even give it a big split over here like it's been used a lot and it's kind of worn and run down and if I were to say duplicate that and make it a little brighter it actually starts to look a little 3d maybe just a smidge over this way so it's not perfectly aligned can't forget to connect the corners so it actually looks like a solid object and then finally we can actually start painting some lighting on here making this side darker like it's in shadow especially in areas like these cracks over here and places where it looks like it should kind of be carved out probably would be best to get rid of some of these lines so they don't look mirrored and that big bell is going to cast quite a bit of shadow onto the wood backboard which will also really help it pop off. The whole bell really just needs to be darkened up to match the new wood. Then some extra lighting, of course, to blend in with everything else, like some shadow in this side, a bunch of shading down here below, since most all of the light is gonna be blocked from the top of the bell, and a touch on the ball as well. But let's not forget where there is light, there is shine. And I want a nice big shine right down the middle of this so we can really see all that form and texture that the bell has. And I'll definitely make sure to use that on the little ball down here so it really pops out from that dark background that's behind it. Some extra bounce lighting will help us better define the shape and make it so this bottom part doesn't feel so drab and desaturated. But what I really think this needs is a nice rim light around the base to help it shine. I do just want to touch up a couple of these shines here and I realized that some of this bell was just a little too wobbly. And with that, there we have a realistic logo for Taco Bell. I think it actually turned out pretty good. I think the colors and the lighting and all that looks really nice. Does it resemble the Mexican cuisine Taco Bell is known for? I don't know. But what I do know is that with four challenges down, it's time for the next one. And for this one, we're going to be gender swapping a famous logo, Starbucks. Because I think we've always wondered what the Starbucks logo would look like if the mermaid was a merman. Evil. 
So to begin, let's start filling in the body a bit for our new undersea person. I imagine mermen are muscular. I guess it's hard to say, but this one definitely will be. Get rid of some of this extra hair here that we won't need and get some big buff arms in here. But you know what he's gonna have from swimming underwater all day. Now traditionally, one of the biggest differences when illustrating men and women are that women tend to have a rounder jawline and men have a larger, sharper one. And their lips tend to not be so emphasized. Make the nose a tad wider, so it's not so petite. I think it needs a bit more of a haircut too, but what I really wanna add in is a big giant beard. Something just kinda flows freely in the water, which will affect his mouth shape. You know, I almost think this is too small. I mean, the Starburst girl had huge, long, flowing hair. So if we wanna stick to the theme, I think we've gotta do the same for this. And to go with that, I'm gonna put some extra dividers in that hair that sort of match the white strands in the original logo. Now there's still something about this long, wavy hair that feels kind of feminine. I really think it's just the streaking shape, because if we fill that in a bit, it starts to look a little bit more like what you might expect. Typically, a king's crown is a little smaller than a queen's. At least that's the way it works in chess. But I will leave the star since it's Starbucks after all. I feel like my beard needs a little more work to maybe help it better match the hairstyle. It's honestly kind of a tricky balance between all this positive and negative space. Honestly, maybe I could just cut through here and just kind of let that white hair fade out into the body. Then I can get a few extra strands of green hair just kind of flowing off there. That should make it look a little more wild and unkempt. Let's square off those cheekbones and make sure the hair follows that line. Now clearly my body needs a lot of help and anatomy is not my specialty, but maybe if I just round some of these off, I'll get something that looks decent. So I spent the next half hour fiddling with this illustration. I gave him a much more pronounced mustache, which really helped his overall look. The hairstyle was changed to feel kind of layered instead of being so flat. Then I sculpted the face to draw out some intensity around the eyes, added in a sweet six pack. And finally, I went over the whole drawing to clean up all the edges. Honestly, that took so long, I think I grew a thicker beard. But in the end, I've got this guy right here, which I actually don't think turned out half bad. It still has the overall general vibe of the Starbucks logo, just with a guy instead of a gal. And my friends, we have gone through a lot of challenges today, but one remains. And for that, I'm gonna see how good I can recreate a famous mascot in just five minutes. And my mascot of choice is Buzz the Bee from Honey Nut Cheerios, one of my favorite cereals. He's got a ton going on. There's lots of shapes and gradients and materials. I think making this in five minutes is gonna be a stretch, but think how much money I could save these guys if I could actually work that fast. So I'm gonna stick him over here, get the clock ready, and we'll see what I can do in five minutes. In three, two, one. Okay, let's start off with the eyeballs here. Just trying to get in the basic shapes really quickly. The head is kind of rounded. Just get those eyelids in. With the amount of time I've had, this is going to be very messy, most likely. But I just want to get something that resembles the general shape in here. Okay, moving on to the neck. And now the shirt. The head is way off. Let's fix that there. Now get his behind in there. Got a few stripes going on. Then back to the sleeves. Okay, we've got a hand going in. Very good, very good. The other hand wraps around something like like that. Fingers on this side. And I'll color pick over here to get this big wooden spoon. Well, I guess it's more honey dipper than a spoon in it. That is kind of the entire idea of Honey Nut Cheerios. Okay, next his wings, so he can actually fly around like a bee normally would. Some pupils, so his eyes don't feel so dead. And a small little dividing line. Get the antennas in here. Dang, I almost forgot he had feet. Okay, no problem. We just put a little leg here, a little leg there. And I guess he's wearing the latest Nikes. Something like that. Okay, and with the time I have left, I'm gonna try to do some shading to get this looking really nice and professional. I guess before the shading, a mouth would help. Some sparkly teeth, a little tongue. I guess he has some bottom teeth too. And we'll try to get in some of these finer details and facial features. Maybe I'll just spend some more time on the actual honey stick. Give it a little bit of a detail, you know. Some of that nice honey drizzle coming off of it. Some detail on the wings. We'll fix his face right up here with some highlights. That's way too bright. There we go. There we go. Am I missing anything important? I don't know. A little shading on the jacket. Around the collar. Um, I guess we're gonna have to call that good right there. I mean, you know, it could probably go on a box of Cheerios if the box was really, really small. But honestly, for the time limit, I don't think it's too bad. I was never gonna be able to do any of these smooth gradients and stuff like that that actually makes it look good. But it does kind of have like a minimal abstract vibe going on with it. That looks kind of cool and also like maybe a three-year-old did it. Well, my friends, I guess that wraps up our challenge for today. Let me know if you like these types of videos. It was something a little different. So if you did, I might make more of them in the future. And if you wanna watch me take some of your favorite brands and simplify them, then I think you'll really love this video right here.